This is part three of our string manipulation series, and we have looked at string functions and string procedures, but what about character functions? So before we get into that, let's focus on what exactly is a character. Well, when we deal with characters in Delphi, we know that we deal with strings, which is a whole bunch of text. So a string is a series of characters, a whole, a whole bunch of those characters. If we want to refer to just one of those characters, you can store it in a variable called a char, C-H-A-R. And that's basically one character, or if you want another way of saying it, a string of length one. You can only store one character in um, that particular type of string. So you can display it as you would normal strings. You can go, you can bind um, chars with strings to display them in string um, components and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. That's how you would declare a character, a char variable. I normally use the C prefix so that I know that it's a character. And you can assign it a particular value by just giving it one character as long as it's follows the rules with strings that you put them in single quotes and that doesn't necessarily have to be a letter it could be a symbol or a number component as long as it's one length only so now that we know what characters are let's go into some of the functions in Delphi that use characters and the first one we're going to look at is the upcase character which is very similar to the uppercase that we discussed in the string functions part however this upcase only makes one character into uppercase it. So the way it works is you give it a parameter of a character of a char and it returns a char variable and whatever variable that you gave it, if it was a letter character, it will change it to a capital letter. So for example, if we went and got the third letter from a variable called S temp and we want to store it, but we want to store it as in its capital form, um, you could use the upcase of it and store it in a completely brand new char variable. Now let's take stemp and let's pretend stemp equals hello world like we've used in our previous examples. You can actually change individual parts of stemp into capitals um, like this. So you would say that particular character stemp at position three, that value must change to the upcase of itself. So that basically means go find stemp at position three. There you can see it's an L, a small L. And we're going to take that, we're going to change it to a capital and change S temp at position 3 to the capital L. So that's basically going to just change that part of S temp to a capital letter. So let's go see how this works in Delphi. So here we are in Delphi and I'm just going to declare a variable of type char for us. So there you can see S letter is type type char. And over here, I'm going to assign it a particular value. Let's give it the K as its value. And we can, S, now show message normally takes in a string. We're going to put S letter in there, or not S letter, C letter. C letter, which is our char variable. And it will hopefully just display that K value. So let's compile. And boom, there we go. We can see that the K value has been changed. Now, if I change that, let's say I wanted to change it to a small K and we wanted to show message the up case of C letter. So we would take that C letter and change it to a capital, let's change it to completely other completely one. Let's make it to a J, a small J. So C letter is a small J if we upcase it. It will change, it will hopefully display the capital version of a J, which means it's a capital one. And if it was a completely different non-letter character, then it would do nothing. So there we go. So that's how it works. Um, now let's say we want to change, hey, we can say, hey, S temp at position 3 is equal to the upcase of s temp at position three. Oh, wrong brackets, Mr. Law. Spacing out there so you can see it. So we want to take this position three. We're going to take that position three. We're going to make it a capital L and put that back into s temp at position three. So basically, when we display s temp here, I want to see hello world, but I want to see that, that L in capitals if this upcase works. 
There we go. You can see there's the capital L there in hello. Fantastic. So S temp or so upcase, sorry, upcase function takes in a character, returns a character, but it returns the uppercase version of that character if it is a particular small letter. That's the main thing that it does. Now, before going into our next functions for characters, I just need to explain to you what uh, ASCII means. Now, ASCII is a particular code. It stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it's a way of representing characters as numbers. So you might have learned that computers use binary to store um, everything in a computer. Now, that makes sense if you're storing numbers, but how do you use numbers to store letters? And so basically, every letter, number, even the punctuation symbols, every symbol that you use has a particular ASCII code. So when it stores a word, it will store a value for each letter or character, and that includes the space. Um, in your text. So if you type in a Word document, each little each character that you type in will be use up a certain amount of space uh, to store, and it's a special code that it's stored. So here's an example of some of the ASCII characters. This is not all of them. These are some of them. And you see each one's got a particular code, and what if you wanted to, you could press Alt, hold it down, and then on your keypad, not at the top, but on the keypad on the right, type in the particular code and then let go of alt and then that character will appear now that doesn't make sense if you're just using your normal letters and numbers and stuff that's already on your keyboard but i'm talking particularly of the characters that aren't on your keyboard i know when um, i was at school when we needed the celsius sign we all knew what the the celsius code was and we could press alt and then the code for celsius i've forgotten it now um, you can just go insert symbol now but these are some of the codes so for example if you look there at the um, the 14th ASCII code, that's a music note. So if you pressed Alt and then 14 and then let go, then you should see that type of uh, value popping up in your in your code or in your, your text document that you are typing. So these are the ASCII characters. Now, why are you going through ASCII, Ms. Glam? Because our next functions deal with ASCII characters. So the first one is the ORD function. And basically what it does is it takes in a character and it returns an integer value. And that integer value represents the ASCII value of that character. So for example, if I say ORD of the character A, then it will return whatever that capital A's ASCII value is, which in this case would be, I think, 65. Um, and that's why, if you remember, like capital letters and small letters are different because they have different ASCII values. So that's what the ORD function does. Now I'm going to go straight into the next function before we go try them up in Delphi because the next one is actually related. It's called the CHR one, not to be confused with the char variable type. So CHR does the exact opposite of the ORD function. What it does is it takes in an integer value and returns a character. So the way this works is you give it the parameter of a number and then it will go and return the ASCII character of that number. So in this case, if we gave it a 65, C letter would be the capital A. It would be almost the reverse of that example that I just showed you above. So let's go try this in Delphi. So here we had our previous example. Just to show you, I'm on my keyboard. I'm going to press, I'm going to hold down the letter, the, the Alt key, and I'm going to press down a 14 on the keypad. Nothing happens. And now let go of the Alt. And now do you notice there's that little music note that was ASCII 14. So that's how you can get those particular characters in your programs if you don't know what to type for them, if it's not on your keyboard. So let's get into it. So let's say we know that C letter, let's make C letter the, um, the letter A. Okay. And so what I want to do, I'm going to take all this out. We don't need this now. We're going to be taking our char variable. We, okay, we're going to take our first our ORD actually. Let's ORD. We're going to take ORD. Now we've got an num. Let's use an num. An num is an integer, and that is equal to the ORD of C letter. Okay, so let's take this out completely so we don't get confused. So an num equals the ORD of C letter. So it's going to take a, and so we want to display into string because an num is a number. Convert it from a number to a string so we can show me. I want to see what that number is that when we say ORD of A. And hopefully it says a 65 because I think that's the code for a A. 
And there we go. So that works there. Fantastic. And the reverse of it, so that's that one. So the reverse gear of it, if I go uh, num, let's take this part away. Not num, we're going to say C letter. C letter equals to the CHR of 14. I wonder if that music note is going to appear. Let's see if we can get that music note to appear. And then I want to display C letter. So C letter is char of 14. So take that 14, go find the corresponding character that's where the ASCII value is 14. Go put it in C letter and let's display it. It was that music note. I wonder if that music note is going to display. Oh, okay. So I can't display certain characters. So if we say 65, which we know is a boom, 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 capital A. So there we go. And so little tricks and things that you can do, you can say um, we could display all the ASCII codes of each letter. If you have a for loop that goes from that to the end and display each one individually, you could do some things like that. So there we go. So that's how you can get the ASCII value or the corresponding character for that ASCII value using char and ORD. For more videos in this video series, as well as other related content on Delphi and RT, go to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook. Um, we'd love to hear from you, love to get your feedback from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.